So a few days ago Konami released a ban list, and as much as I enjoy making fun of it... He's good, he knows every aspect of this game, but my grandpa put all his gaming knowledge, his whole heart, into assembling this deck. I have to believe that it holds some secret strategy. This card is useless. It was pretty obvious that this is probably not going to be the only ban list we're seeing this month, or at least early next. So just like normal with every ban list season, it is time for me to give you guys my completely irrelevant opinion on what cards I believe will be banned on the upcoming list. So a couple of important things to note before I get into it, just like all ban list prediction videos, please do keep in mind that these are predictions, not a wish list. I'm not telling Konami what to ban, I'm only trying to predict what they will ban. So before you write an angry comment telling me your favourite art type shouldn't have been in this video, please remember that. Secondly, if you do enjoy this kind of content or find it useful, please like the video down below and consider subscribing whilst you're down there. It's completely free and you can unsub at any time. Alright, let's get into it. So honestly, as far as the current meta goes, there isn't anything that completely dominates the landscape with new decks managing to break the top tiers fairly frequently, such as Resonators and quite surprisingly, Gaia as well. Because of this, the ban list doesn't really need to be all that harsh in terms of balancing, and it's probably going to be much more focused on two things. Removing the old to make room for the new, so some of the older decks currently performing well, especially in the last KC Cup, are probably going to be hit. And secondly, a couple of slaps on the wrist for stuff that is either considered a bit too strong, or just not very interactive or unfun. So first limit I expect to see is going to be targeted towards Thunder Dragon with Thunder Dragon Dark being set to 2. So Thunder Dragon has been meta for an extremely long time. Sure they've popped in and out a couple of times due to counter decks and a couple of bands here and there, but generally this deck has sat in the top 2-3 to three tiers for many months now, and Konami knows this. Now looking at the standard Thunder Dragon list, there isn't a whole lot that is considered cheap that Konami can target, since as we know from previous ban lists they do heavily lean towards hitting the lower rarity cards, and it's pretty hard to see an SR or an Ultra Rare ever hit on a ban list, especially from a box. And of those targets they can actually hit, the ones that are actually core cool or make significant impact is pretty low considering the amount of Thunder Dragon lists that are out there. So the two targets Konami are most likely looking at are Lupine or Thunder Dragon Dark, and considering Dark has already been on Konami's ban list before, I feel like it's just the easier target. Just like last time, putting this in the same list as both Gold Sark and Charge the Light Brigade should be a pretty solid nerf to the deck, as it essentially means you're forced to either cut one of the two decks main engines, or just run one copy of the deck's best searcher. I'm pretty sure that when they implemented this change last time, it just about wiped Thunders from existence, and that was when they were put all to limit 3, so this would actually be a harsher nerf than last time. But I feel like if Konami is willing to do it once, they're probably willing to do it again. Next up we have a fairly soft nerf due to the art type still being fairly new. Elegant Egotist to 2. So Harpies have been out for a fair bit now, definitely enough time for the deck to start receiving a couple of nerfs, and considering 76% of all Harpy lists are now running the limited to 2 card Treacherous Trap Hole, limiting something to 2 to remove it is probably where Konami will start. As for why they would hit Egotist specifically, well it's kind of the only choice by a long shot, as there quite frankly just isn't really anything else in Harpies below SR rarity. They could hit Feather's Rest, but that's currently only run at 1 anyway, so it wouldn't exactly remove the limited 2 pull. They could hit some of the older Harpies, but I feel like hitting these would be dumb, as people would just swap which Harpies they are running and continue on as if nothing had happened. And besides that, there really isn't anything else low rarity in the core of Harpies, leaving Egotist to be the only sensible hit as it's also very irreplaceable. So of all the bands I'll mention in this video, I think this one is the one I'm most confident in Konami implementing. Next up we have the band I'm pretty sure I've tried to predict for the last 3 bandless videos now. Did it do draw or Gaga win to 2? So last bandless we saw Konami decide to deal their first limit towards Onomatopoeia, which was placing Gaga Sister to 2, in an attempt to remove the ever so notorious Hatronade from the OTK deck which we have seen countless times with many different OTK decks in the past. The problem with this solution though is that it did a whole lot of jack shit, to the point where not only have Onomats returned to the exact same tier they were before the ban, they are literally still running Hadronade. It may now only be at one copy, but when you still have access to Triple Pot of Greed in your deck, it's not exactly hard to find. So what will they do this time? 
Well, the easiest solution is to obviously hit another card to two, making it so owner mads have to start seriously considering whether or not they can afford to run Trenade. As if two cards are on the two list, if you want to run Trenade, one of them has to go. Now, taking a look at an owner mat list, the two cheapest cards are Doo Doo Draw, Ugar Ugar Wind, and both of which are extremely valuable to how owner mats play. Without Wind, they are very easily disrupted, and it's currently the only way to play around having their normal summon stopped. And if draw was removed, obviously getting a hold of precious back row removal and combo pieces, especially after the skill nerf, becomes a hell of a lot harder. So whichever one of these cards Konami decide to hit, it will probably be enough to finally remove Trenade from the list, and hopefully stop this deck taking up like 40% of every KC Cup top card. Speaking of KC Cup destroyers, Fusion Gate is about to receive its long-awaited limited 2 or 3 nerf. After the last KC Cup, it became pretty apparent that Konami's last attempt at giving this deck a nerf didn't really achieve a whole lot. Cyber Dragons were in the top 10 three times, and had a ridiculous amount of lists making the top 128, making this deck arguably the most successful deck in the format. Obviously this is partly due to the KC Cup format being utter garbage and way more focused on the amount of jewels one can play, rather than the amount of those you actually win. But that's besides the point, as it's already known that Konami do like to focus specific bands around KC Cup results, making Cyber Dragons a very high priority target. Now the problem with nerfing this deck is, it already has so many nerfs, it's actually getting kind of ridiculous. Quite literally Cyber Dragon only have three core cards that remain untouched. Gate, Core and their Fusion Spell. And of these three cards, the most likely target, purely because of its age, has to be Fusion Gate. And this nerf can go one of two ways, depending on how Konami feels about Cyber Dragons. They can limit it to three, which would make it compete with Cosmic Cyclone, effectively removing Cosmic from the list, which would be a fairly strong slap on the wrist, but would leave the deck in quite a playable state. Or, Konami decides they've had enough of this deck completely, and limit it to two, competing with both Overflow and Fusion Support, which would be devastating, and I highly doubt there'd be much recovery from this one, at least at the higher levels. Honestly, I'm a bit conflicted on how Konami feels about this deck, since it is an anime art type, so that leads me to think they won't want to completely dismantle it. But on the other hand, the amount of nerfs they've already given to this deck, show they probably do want this thing dead. Either way, I'm pretty sure this deck is going to be receiving some kind of a hit. And now for my final changes, both of which are skill related. Destiny Draw and Endless Trap Hell. Now after seeing Konami's very recent skill changes, I wasn't sure whether or not to include this part in the video, since they may just not be nerfing any other skills this time around. But because the skill changes they made didn't seem exactly very competitive and more quality of life stuff, I still feel like it's likely that more changes are down the road. So Destiny Draw is currently a complete and utter cancer to deal with, and is in no way used in the way it was originally designed to be, and Konami must know this. Destiny Draw isn't being used as some last ditch hard cards anime comeback skill. It's a skill decks are literally being built around. I don't quite remember the scene in the anime where Yugi activates three copies of Sphere Karibo along with three copies of Veil and three copies of Akana Force on top of the Karibos he already has in his deck. So two things will probably happen to this skill. First of all, the skill will probably change to only activatable when below a life point threshold as opposed to just whenever you've taken a certain amount of damage. This stops people activating the skill at near full life points due to cards like Veil. Vale. Secondly, I think the life point requirement will increase to 1k or below. Not only is this more thematic with how the skill is meant to be, the whole anime, heart of the cards, comeback draw, but it's also just a hell of a lot more balanced considering decks like Lunar Light seem to abuse this thing to no end, with very little actual counterplay outside of just, well, I guess I just can't attack you. And the other skill I believe will be hit is Endless Trap Hell. Honestly, this skill has to be on Konami's mind, as it's a skill that heavily encourages the counter trap decks everyone dislikes. Nobody wants to see a deck in the meta with 50% trap cards. It's just not fun. And this hit isn't something that's targeted specifically at just Shiranui. It's just a hit that should probably happen at some point down the line to help encourage less cancerous deck building since it's not exactly like this is the first time we've seen this making its way into the higher tiers. I think the most likely change will simply to force you to shuffle one card from your hand back into the deck in order to activate the skill. This stops the skill being a straight up plus one, 
and it's a type of nerf we've already seen two skills such as Bandit. This change doesn't completely kill the skill, but it certainly makes it a lot more fair and hopefully is enough to keep it away from the top tiers for a little while. Alright guys, that's it for my little list. What do you guys think? Did I miss something? Do you disagree with my predictions? Let me know in the comments down below. And whilst you're down there, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to see more content from me. Thank you guys for watching. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.